Peace be upon you. Today we're going to talk about quadratic functions and Mr. Iman Arif. First of all, we're going to talk about the standard form. And the standard form here we have for the quadratic function is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, while a and b and c are real numbers, and a cannot be 0. Obviously, a cannot be 0 because quadratic functions raise to the second power. The second power here will distinguish that this is quadratic function. He said, like an amazing definition for polynomial. Polynomial is a mathematical expression involving a sum of powers of one or more variables multiplied by coefficients. For example, here we have x power 4 minus 3x squared plus 1. This is an example for polynomial. And we can determine the degree of a polynomial function by its value for the largest exponent of x. A linear function is a polynomial function of a degree of 1. Quadratic function is a polynomial function of degree of 2. Let's move further and talking about concavity, like a concave down parabola or concave up parabola. Whether it's concave up or concave down based on the sign or the coefficient of x squared. If it's negative, which is smaller than zero, it should be concave down. And it has a maximum turning point. This is maximum turning point. If it's concave up, then A should be positive, which is greater than zero, and having minimum turning point. This is the minimum turning point here, as you notice that. Let's move further and talking about properties of quadratic functions. Here we have some critical properties. He said, for a quadratic function f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, while a cannot be zero. The x-coordinate of the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex, whether concave up or concave down, the x-coordinate here, we can find it using this rule, which is negative v over 2a, negative v over 2a, such as if we have y equals 2x squared, plus 3x minus 1, 2 will be a, 3 will be b, and negative 1 will be c. Then, just only substituting, direct substituting, or direct substitution. Then, the second property here, the equation of its axis of symmetry, then the axis of symmetry will divide the, the parabola into two similar parts. And this is the rule. The coordinates of the of its first vertex are negative v over 2a, which is x value. And after that, taking this x value, substituting in the function itself to find the value of y. What about y-intercept? Y-intercept should be 0 and c. Such as in this scenario, y-intercept should be negative 1. And then he said for a quadratic function f of x, with x intercepts x1 and x2 to determine x coordinate of the vertex is x coordinate for the vertex equals x1 plus x2 divided by 2. And to determine to determining y for the vertex, it becomes f of this value, which is x1 plus x2 divided by 2. Let's move further and talking about this question. Here we have six questions with six different equations from 1 to 6. I'll solve just only the first two parts. About this question we here, we have x squared minus x minus 6. The first question he said, find the coordinates of the vertex, coordinate of the vertex, which is x and y. Then to find x, v becomes negative v over 2a. Then direct substitution, v equals to negative 1, then negative negative 1 over 2, and a represented by 1 then 2 by 1. It becomes 1 over 2 because negative by negative becomes positive and 2 by 1 becomes 2. Then it becomes half. After that, to find y coordinate for the vertex, you need to substitute just only directly like that. Then it becomes 
half squared minus half minus six. Then half squared becomes one over four and negative half minus six. Using your own calculator, you can determine the final results. Here, fourth, which is one over four, minus one over two, plus six. I'm sorry, minus six. Okay. In this scenario, it becomes, give me a second, fourth, this is like fourth and negative two over four minus, like for example, this is uh, four by six becomes 24 over four. Then negative fourth and negative 24 uh, over four, it becomes negative 25 over four. And negative 25 over four becomes negative six, uh, 0.25, which is negative six and fourth. Okay. Then for this part here, it becomes half and negative 6.25. What about finding the equation of its axis of symmetry, which is x. x equals what? Negative b over 2a, which is half. What about the third question? Determine whether the function is concave up or concave down. We say if it's if the coefficient for x squared, positive coefficient becomes concave up. Then here we find that the coefficient of x squared is positive, then it's concave up. The parabola concave up. The fourth question, he said, find the y-intercept. Y-intercept represented by the constant value, which is negative six in this scenario. And he asked me, he asked me a critical question here. He said, if the function is factorizable, find the x-intercepts. This is negative six point twenty-five. Okay, find the x-intercepts. Then let's think about two values. If you do multiplication for these two values, the result should be negative six. If you add them, the result should be negative one. It's obviously negative three and two. Then y equals x minus three by x plus two. If you do multiplication for these two values, that the result should be negative six. If you add them, the result should be negative one. Then simply making it equals to zero because to find x intercepts, y should equal zero. Then x equals three and x equals negative two. And about the last one, you can graph it using the quadratic function. Oh, I'm sorry. You need to sketch the quadratic function using your results from i to b. Then it's simply, you can graph it. You can graph it, just only graph the y-axis and x-axis. Let's see how can we graph it. This is y-axis and this is x-axis. Then using the points, like he said, the x-intercept, the y, I'm sorry, the y-intercept, negative six, then negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. This is negative six. And what about x-intercepts? x-intercepts at negative, at negative two, here negative two, and three, one, two, three, this is the three. Here we have three points. What about the vertex? The vertex is half and negative 6.25. Then half, this is half, and negative 6.25 approximately here. Okay, and then you can link between the points. Like this is, like that. I'm sorry for my graphing. And like that. This is the quadratic equation. This is how can we graph the quadratic equation. Okay, this is the first question. What about the second question? 
To solve the second question, we need to focus. Here we have negative x squared plus 2x minus 4. This is a really critical one. Negative x squared plus 2x minus 4. Then you need to find the coordinates of the vertex. The coordinates of the vertex, first of all, x equals negative b over 2a. It becomes negative 2, I'm sorry, negative negative 2, which is 2, divided by, no, I'm sorry, it's negative 2, by the way, because b equals 2, then it's negative 2, divided by 2 by negative 1, which is negative 2, equals 1. This is x coordinate. What about y coordinate for the vertex? y coordinate for the vertex equals negative 1 squared plus 2 by 1 minus 4. Then it becomes negative 1 plus 2 minus 4. Then negative 1 and negative 4, negative 5 and 2 becomes negative 3. And this is y uh, vertex or y coordinate for the vertex, negative 3. The point is 1 and negative 3. Find the equation of its axis of symmetry, x equals negative b over 2a, again, using the same procedure, equals 1. Determine whether the function is concave up or concave down. Because the negative, it's concave down. Find the y-intercept, the constant value, which is negative 4. Then, if the function is factorizable, find the x-intercepts. This is a critical one because of the negative. Then negative x squared plus 2x minus 4 equals 0. I can take negative as a, as a common factor, by the way. Then, taking negative as a common factor, it becomes x squared minus 2x plus 4 equal to 0. Then after that, two values, the product of them should be 4. If you add them, the result should be negative 2. Let's think about that. And we can cancel this negative by dividing both sides over negative 1. Okay. Two values, if you multiply them, the result should be 4. Let's look for the factors of 4. 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. Okay. Should be negative, both of them, because here we have 4. And should be negative, both of them, because the middle is negative 2. It's not factorizable then it is not factorizable. What about the last one? We need to graph it. By the way, we can use like the general rule to factorize this question. And this is the general rule. Or to find, not to factorize, to find x roots or x solutions or the x intercepts, by the way. Like negative b, positive or negative, b squared, minus 4ac over 2a. This is the general rule. We don't care about it right now. Now, we are going to, we are going to talk about what? We are going to graph the question, or to, to graph the function, which is the quadratic one. This is x-axis and this is y-axis. x and y. After that, the vertex is 1 and negative 3. 1 on x-axis and negative 3 or y. This is negative 3. This is 1. Notice that it's concave down. And y-intercept represented by negative 4. And this is y-intercept. That here should be negative 4. Let's continue this part. And this is like this is the, the quadratic. This is how to graph the quadratic equation. And this is the line of symmetry, which is while x equals to 1. Okay, let's move further. I'm talking about factorized form as we did in the last part. Why we put negative b and negative q? Because I is as you know that well. <clears throat> If you have, for example, y equals 
x squared plus 5x plus 6. And you need to factorize this part. It becomes y equals x plus 2 by x plus 3. But if you need to find x-intercepts, you're going to solve them. Then it becomes x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3. OK? And notice that a cannot be 0. What about the vertex form? Here we have like the vertex form y equals a by x minus h squared plus k. Then to write that vertex 1, you need to make the opposite direction or opposite sign for this value. Like here, negative becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative. Then k, take it as it is. This is the vertex form. Let's determine the first two. Here we need to determine two things, which is the vertex point and determine if the quadratic is concave up or concave down. Concave up if it's positive, like the coefficient positive. Concave down, like if, if it's negative. Here concave down and here concave up. And the points, the vertex point here, you need to, to take the opposite sign, which is positive 3, and take this one as it is. What about that? Take the opposite one, which is 4 and negative 3. Don't care about this negative. What about this one? Negative 1 and negative 1, because you, you're going to take the opposite sign. Here, negative 2 and 1. What about this question? He said, write down y equals x squared plus 2x minus 2n vertex 4. Now we're going to use completing the square. You're going to take the middle point, the middle value, which is 2, applying this rule, which is b divided by 2 squared. b represented by 2 divided by 2 all squared becomes 1. You need to add and subtract same content, same value, which is 1. You're going to add 1, then subtract 1 for the question. Then it becomes x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 1 minus 2. Now you can put it in this form, like x plus 1 whole squared. Because 1 by 1 equals 1, and 1 plus 1 equals 2. And then you're going to add these two values, which is negative 3. Then the, the vertex point becomes negative 1 and negative 3. That's it. I think these questions, you need to solve them and send me the solution directly through WhatsApp. Thanks for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.